this flaming trash can of a year is finally over. So let's celebrate by talking about my favorite sparkle dust of the year. Thank you for watching. My name is Mia and this is my virtual vanity, a place where we both love makeup and we're quite critical of it. Today I want to talk to you guys about my favorite makeup of 2020. I'll admit it did take me quite a bit to figure out this list because with the, um, you know, the plague, I haven't worn makeup on the daily as I used to before. I have worn makeup for filming or for the occasional grand adventure to the store, but that's basically it. So I kind of had to trawl through my memory and try to remember what were the things that I kept wanting to use throughout the year? What were the things that I missed and used just for the sake of using? What were the things that actually sparked joy when I was using them? I have set up this video to be in categories. We are going to start with base products, blush, highlighter, bronzer, lips, eyeshadow, and then other stuff. And we are then going to finish with perfume and nail polish, just so we can close out the video if that's really not something that you're interested in. Without further ado, let's start. So base products. The very first thing that comes to mind is the Becca Under Eye Color Correcting Concealer. The one that comes in a pot. I use the coloration light to medium. If only I had known years ago that this is the only thing that I needed to look alive. Apparently I did not need depression and anxiety meds all of those years ago. I could have just used that and looked like a well-rested happy person. As much as I would love to be able to rock the Crypt Keeper vampire look with my heavy dark under eyes. It's not a look that I can pull off. This covers very well my under eye circles. It makes me look alive. It makes me look well rested. It makes me look like I have eight hours of sleep under my belt, which hasn't happened for the entirety of 2020. Insomnia and me are BFFs, BFFs right now. This has quite a thick consistency and it's a bit I wouldn't say greasy, but it's very emollient. So I like to apply it tapping with a finger in very, very thin layers and then apply my concealer afterwards. If I want to only wear that, I need to powder it because it is very, very luminous and it catches every figment of light that hits my eyes. But it's truly one of my favorite discoveries of 2020, truly. For foundation, my holy grail, the Makeup Forever Water Blend Foundation. Listen, I have finished it. I've not had it for the past couple of weeks and I'm suffering. I miss it like I would miss a lover. Nothing else compares. This is a very watery sheer foundation just like the name suggests. You will not find any coverage in this and this is precisely why I like it. It is such a sheer tint, a veil of color. It evens out my complexion while still letting freckles and spots show through and everything that you know gives personality to my face god i miss this foundation so much but i'm not willing to splurge on it when i know that i'm not gonna use it daily you know for concealer and powder i've been really really impressed by the revlon candid line i use the revlon candid concealer in fair and the powder in the lightest coloration the concealer is really hydrating really nice with a good medium coverage it spreads out evenly, blends beautifully. I like it for the under eyes, but not so much necessarily for, you know, zits and other spots. The Candid Powder is truly a thing of beauty. It performs better than other more expensive powders that I've tried. It is so finely milled, so cosmetically elegant in its application. It smooths everything out. It's great for winter and summer for both the under eyes and for the T-zone. I can't express how much I love it enough. I've got two favorite primers this year. The Vidia Lumilayer Primer, which makes me look like a luminous goddess. It makes this dry crackled skin look actually dewy and bright and like I actually remember to drink all of the eight glasses of water that a human being is supposed to drink on the daily. It's also quite 
elegant in its packaging it's hefty it's it's really nice it's got this iridescent sheen to it that makes the skin look dewy without being greasy and i really appreciate that another primer is a primer that i've loved for years and years and years this is the cover effects blowing primer which i'm trying to pan because it's it's getting along there in age it's uh, not long left for this world this gives where you place it a matte velvety soft look to it while filling in all of the pores that I wanted to fill in it gives the skin a very perfected look I liked wearing it in the summer because it would give me this perfected look without having to put on foundation that would just smear on the mask done with the base let's talk blush highlighter bronzer we're getting into the um interesting categories one of my favorite discoveries this year and um, a favorite of what nabla has came out this year is their skin glazing skin bronzing line their skin bronzing bronzer as the name suggests in dune is such a beautiful product with such a unique formula despite the quite intimidating color for someone as light as i am it shears out absolutely beautifully blends out seamlessly effortlessly i don't even have to work at it i can just slap the brush on my face and that just applies beautifully and makes me look healthy and like i've actually seen the sun and not been a hermit in my own home since february essentially what i also like it is that it can be built up to its full intensity and full pigmentation but you can seriously play with it a bit so that it can work for both a, a summer and a winter shade I initially thought when I received it and I swatched it, you know, with a finger at full intensity, I looked at it and I was like, oh, oh, I fucked up. <laughs> because it looked way too dark. But when you apply it with a brush, that is where it shines and it shows how versatile it actually is. Likewise, their skin gl glazing in ozone is one of my favorite highlighter finds of the year. It is so shiny. It's so shiny without shimmer, being shimmering, without being glittery. It's just a landing strip of brightness on your face while also blending out and melting in so it doesn't actually look like you've got Neapolitan ice cream. It blends out so beautifully. I can't praise it enough. It's such a beautiful formula. Speaking of bronzers, I also really like a more recent purchase. I actually bought this in December when I took a break from my beauty budget. It's the Kiko Milano Lost in Amalfi Bronzer in Warm Melange. Listen, the packaging is a work of art. I love it. But I also love the product inside because it's quite warm and yellow leaning but it's not too much even for my neutral-ish to cool undertone it blends out effortlessly it is quite pigmented so i need to go lightly with it but it's not the type of pigmented where it you know it it uh, ends up being patchy or it sticks to certain places in your face it's a really really beautiful easy to use formula that actually makes me look like the half italian side of me instead of the whatever the hell i look like right now i've started really started getting into bronzer this year because seeing as that i've not seen any sun i've gotten paler and paler and my skin has gotten more translucent and more translucent to the point where um you can see the veins in my chest and I don't necessarily mind it aesthetically, but it is a constant reminder that I need to take vitamin D pills. And not the funny haha -ha kind, but the ones that people take because they have not gone outside nearly enough. And it makes me sad. Uh, for blush, I have liked very much the Cover FX Duo in Soft Peach. This is a very beautiful peachy blush, quite pigmented, so I do suggest a blush brush that is not very densely packed, so you can actually have some control over what happens. It's a beautiful finish, it's a beautiful color, it's just like the name suggests, it's a slightly ripened peach type of color, at least on my skin tone. I really, really do love it, and I love the soap packaging. Another blush that I really enjoyed is Patrick Ta's She's So Passionate, which is a beautiful, soft, muted rose blush that kind of goes along with every look. And it makes me look so beautifully flushed, like I'm a princess in a fairy tale. It blends 
effortlessly I really really do enjoy it I've also been really really liking the Zoeva soft sun blush in moonlit this is what I have on my cheeks today no bronzer so you can actually see the color it's a very muted dusty rose towards a slightly neutral type of tinge it kind of goes along with everything it's it blends seamlessly on my face I don't know where the blush ends and where my skin begins, where the natural flush begins and when, you know, the, the, the pigment actually starts. It is a very sheer, fine formula, so I would not recommend it to anyone that is more than a couple of shades darker than me, but I think they did have other shades in the same formula with slight differences. I don't know. I've not tried the other ones, but I really do like Moonlit. For lips, I'm going to keep it really short and sweet because I haven't had any uh, particularly real favorites. I've not worn lipstick under my mask most of the times and when I did, it was during filming. And I did try to alternate the lipstick that I was using just so I didn't necessarily neglect stuff in my collection. But I did have a couple of things that I've been really enjoying even when filming and in real life. I've been really liking the Neve Cosmetics Pastello Lip Colors in Marmota, which is a terracotta beige peachy, peachy shade, very neutral. And Ballerina, which I actually have on my lips right now. It's a um, my lips but pinker, my better type of shade. On top of Valerina right now, I have another favorite and that is the Clarins Lip Oil, which I am desperately trying to pan because it's gotten a long in age and I want to buy a new one. This is a very, very hydrating lip oil that can substitute as both nourishment for the lips and also as a high shine gloss. I've been really, really enjoying this formula. Can't praise it enough. I've been using it in the mornings, I've been using it at night to supply some nourishment to my lips and I wake up with my, to my lips being very plump and hydrated all of the time but unlike other chapsticks that I've used, I have not noticed my lips being dry when I don't use it for a couple of days like they're fine without it but they're even better with it last but not least I've been really enjoying the Kiko um, Hydra Gloss formula it's such a thin sheer comfortable formula that is pigmented without being gloopy without getting into the corners of your lips which i absolutely fucking hate in glosses it does not stick while also being quite high shine and beautiful this is a lip gloss formula that i would recommend for someone that dislikes lip glosses in principle because it is a formula that doesn't have anything associated with the stereotypical lip gloss faults. I've also been really liking the Zessi and Egyptian Museum lipstick in the coloration 309 which is a beautiful yellow leaning warm toned red. I have to stop myself from using this all of the time. It's one of my favorite shades of red in my collection by far. Beautiful creamy hydrating formula, high pigment. It just looks absolutely stunning against my coloration. I'm honestly super mad that I can't use this much more than I am because it's such an unexpectedly beautiful shade on me. Historically, I've liked blue-based reds more, but this is really making me get into the um, more yellower toned reds. This is what y'all have been waiting for. I know this is what y'all have been waiting for. Eyeshadow! Okay, one of my favorite finds of this year were Bernovich singles. I actually have a video review up on them. It's like six minutes long. I have absolutely no idea how I managed to cram 30 minutes of footage into six minutes. I edited that video to be as dense as lead. I'm still impressed with myself and yes, I know I'm sucking my own dick with it, but how did I manage? Damn. These are the sparkliest eyeshadows this side of Europe and I mean it. These are so beautiful, so multi-dimensional, so shiny, sparkling, shimmering, glittery. It's just they scratch at my crow brain so amazingly well. They're good as on their own and they're good as toppers. I cannot praise them enough. Go buy Bernovich. I'm actually waiting on my second order from them because I was like, I'm not starting my 2021 budget and denying myself the pleasure of buying more Bernovich until a couple of months in. No, no, sir. No, sir, we are going into the budget bunker with a lot, many supplies to tide us over the year, all right? 
I am one of those doomsday sayers that goes to the supermarket and buys 100 kilos of toilet paper but instead of toilet paper what I'm dragging inside my bomb shelter is I don't know, bitch, eye shadows? At least I have good taste. I've also been really liking a palette that has actually been dragged which is not that unsurprising because one of my last year's favorite was the Huda Beauty Neon Greens which again was universally hated. I'm talking about the Beauty Bay Pastels palette. A palette that I bought in November and I need to put it down because I can't stop using it just for the fun of it. These are sheer powdery washes of color. They're pastels. Your mileage may vary on my paper white skin tone, they work fine. What I really like about this is that it helps me create beautiful, ethereal, softly blended fairy looks with little to no effort, specifically because of the low pigmentation and the airy quality of, of, of the formula and the shades. Um, they don't like to be layered more than three or so at a time, so that's a limitation that I've kind of had to work with, but Truly one of my favorites. Pastels are just lovely. Lovely and this scratches the itch just perfectly for me. Nabla Dreamy 2. I feel that this is the sparkliest, sultriest, most delicious palette that Nabla has come out with. It seriously reminds me of a box of exotic chocolates. Simply because it's so rich and has so much depth to it. But then you swatch it and you've got this interesting melange of sparkle and multi-layered pigment. It's actually what I'm wearing on my eyes. I have so many looks created with this goddamn palette. So many looks. Um, some shades are harder to work with, specifically that darker shade in the corner. It's a bit fussy. But otherwise, I really like the performance of every single shade. Dionysus is my favorite red shade in my entire collection. And every single shimmer is so multi-layered in that it's not, you know, just a golden shimmer or a pink shimmer. The moment that you move and it catches the light, you kind of see the pigment shift like a little bit. Um, so for example, the top row golden shimmer, when you move, it's got like a dirty, it's like a, a dirty gold undertone to it. So it goes from flash of pure gold to that dirty undertone that I absolutely love. It's very steampunkish. That's the word that I was looking for. I just, I just can't praise this palette enough. I really, really do love it. And it's so versatile. But if you're someone that likes daytime, work-appropriate, subtle looks, this is not the palette for you. This is all sparkling glitter, ma'am. Uh, something that I've really, really liked this year have been Novo singles that I got from AliExpress. Uh, specifically the one that is a blue to purple-ish duo chrome. One that acts as a green glitter topper and another one that acts as a gold glitter topper. I'm going to leave the numbers and, you know, pictures of them over here. These are a very high flake formula, like a very high, highly glittery formula without being a pressed glitter. The shimmer flakes are quite big, quite strong, that catch the light. They're very high impact. These are not for the faint of heart. Honorable mention to shadows that I've not used as much this year, but I've actually been really, really missing. These were shadows that I used to use almost every time, like a couple of times a week when I used to go to work, simply because they were easy and they were impactful. But I have been trying to uh, rotate through my stash again so I don't neglect most eyeshadows that I have and just use my favorites. So I've not used these as much but I do miss them. Like I've keenly missed them this year so they deserve to be called favorites still. Colourpop Glass Bowl, Colourpop Tea Garden and Nabla Alchemy Nabla Water Dream. If you are not new to this channel, you know that I've got a years long love affair with all of those. Absolutely beautiful, all of them. I really, really want to use them again on the daily. <laughs> I miss going to work. I miss doing makeup daily. I miss functional makeup where it wasn't necessarily makeup that I did for YouTube or Instagram, but it was rather makeup that was my morning pick-me-up of the day. So matte in the crease, shimmer on the lid, or just a duo chrome on the lid. Something quick and easy. For me, makeup when going to work was just 
another pick-me-up like coffee the tactile and sensorial and visual experience of it helped me start my morning right but it had a different function than the makeup that I use for creative purposes which is much more complicated consider work makeup like a warm-up sketch and then what I do for YouTube and for Instagram is like a, a full-blown painting artwork I hope I'm making sense I'm probably not but whatever okay now that we are past the fun sparkle dust shade let's talk about other stuff my favorite mascara of the year was the Kiko Extra Sculpt, which I bought because Mariam, my friend here on YouTube, kept recommending it to me. New Holy Grail. Oh my god. I still miss my Lancome Monsieur Big and the Milk Kush Mascara, which were favorites last year, but like, I'm not spending that amount of money on mascara just to use it for Instagram, YouTube, and to go to the grocery store. Like, no, I respect my wallet enough not to do that. So I've been really liking the Kiko Extra Sculpt because it curls, volumizes, lengthens, darkens, and gives me doll lash like eyes while being relatively affordable and much cheaper, you know, that fucking Lancome mascara. It's um, what I have on my eyes right now. It's, it's seriously effective. I really, really like it and it doesn't flake, it doesn't smudge, stays on all day and it's really, really easy to take off as well. Let's talk brushes. For blush, my favorite brush this year, God, I just hate. I hate having to say that sequence of words. Blush, brush, blush, brush, blush, blush. Ugh, I hate it, I hate it. it it's, it's a tongue twister for me. The e.l.f pointed blush brush i absolutely adore it because it gives me a lot of control over the pigmentation of the blush i love using it for both sheer blushes but especially for pigmented blushes because the fact that it's so pointed and the bristles are kind of spaced out gives me a lot of control so i don't just plop a lot of blush on my cheek at the same time it just it gives me a lot of control i really like it um, for people in Europe, if you've got access to Parsa or Ebelin, which I found in the Me stores, Deutsche Market, uh, they've got the same exact shape, same exact function. I love them as much as my e.l.f. brush. My favorite foundation brush is by far the Zoeva 104. Before I got this brush, listen, I hated applying foundation with a brush with a passion. Nothing works. Everything seemed to look very caked on and streaky. This one is an absolute game changer. I really can't praise it enough. It was a bit of an investment because I'm a cheap bitch when it comes to brushes, but absolutely gorgeous. I really, really can't sing the praises of this enough as I should. The brushes that I have used for years and years and years are the Jessup brush sets and individuals from AliExpress. And they are truly one of the best affordable type of brush sets ever. I really cannot recommend them enough. I really like their sets in particular, but I've also gotten a couple of individuals that I think I, sh I should talk about. For brows, I really like using their 317 wing liner because it's very fine and with the right type of powder, you can imitate brush strokes and hair strokes. I've been really liking their 322 brow liner. Like, ironically, I use them for the opposite purposes. This one I really like to use to line my upper lash line with a darker color. I don't use fake lashes at all. So if I want to look more doll-like, I just need to line a little bit and tight line that area over there. I've been really liking the short shader 214 to do my lower eyelid with color as well as pack more color near the lid and for crease work i've been really liking their 244 firm blender and 228 lux crease the firm blender is tinier and shorter the lux crease is just a wee bit fluffier and longer and i really like using them for precision crease blending work more uh, brushes i've mentioned these on instagram and in other favorites videos Kupil brushes for blending in the crease particularly their 306 and their 305 brushes which are humongous they're the size of a small quail egg but what makes them so amazing is that being so 
so fluffy and being so oval and egg shaped that gives you a very beautiful and sheer wash on the lid so if you're into that like I am and you like soft blends these are absolutely perfect for that my battery died and I am sharing my seat with a cat so if things look different this is why um, without further ado, let's continue on to the miscellaneous part of the video that is fragrance and nail polish. Feel free to skip to the end of the video for New Year's wishes and all of that if you're not interested. No harm, no foul, I won't hold it against you. Let's start with nail polish. I was really into neutral nail polishes this year, mainly because my loungewear is mostly uh, neutral blushy tones. And I like to be really, really matchy-matchy, so I've not had much occasion to use my crazy duochrome nail polishes. They do want to use a duochrome nail polish that is always Cinnamon Spark by H&M. And this is basically Nabla Alchemy in nail polish form. Terracotta burgundy-ish base with a turquoise blue shift and shimmer. I always get compliments when I use this, and it also has like a great staying power. It chips maybe after five days of wear. H&M nail polishes are a really good formula. For neutrals, I've been really liking Essie Palette Slippers, which is a very, I would say, stark color. A very light color. Like, you can definitely tell that I've wanted my nails to be the star of the show. It looks very elegant and elevated, but I don't feel that it deserves the hype that it does because if I try to put more than three coats, it starts to... No, not look that great. It starts to it starts to streak. So I'm forced to use one translucent coat or two quote, quote, coats max. I've also been really liking Colly Star in the coloration Neutro French 513, which is a beautiful blush pink tone. The more layers you put, the more it gets opaque. If not, it's just a translucent blushy tone that makes my nails look really polished and put together while also being effortless. I've also been liking uh, Revlon Grey Suede and that's in the number 705 which is more of a grayish top neutral which is my perfect neutral mani because it matches my undertones really really well specifically for every um, season except summer when theoretically I do get a little bit darker not by much but just just a little bit for perfumes I've been wearing a perfume around the house but not like my super duper expensive perfumes um, I've been using a lot of whatever body sprays I can find I've been using a lot of the samples that I always get with Sephora orders just to use them up sometimes like the good part is that I'm always smelling nice the Interesting part is, is that I sometimes can't tell when the samples are men's perfume So I sometimes end up smelling like a goddamn sexy sexy man I put on myself Calvin Klein all the other day and I was smelling like daddy I was smelling sexy It's a pity my guy doesn't wear perfumes because he's really sensitive to them Otherwise I would just bathe him in Calvin Klein all but that's not besides the point, that's not a favorite, that's just uh, an anecdote. So I've been really liking Ellen Tracy Tracy, which is a powdery violet perfume. A very easy, soft scent, a comforting scent. And I've used that a lot in spring and autumn. In summer, I've used Davidoff Cool Water because it's one of my favorites. Like, I literally have three types of Davidoff cool water in my perfume collection. I love it that much. In winter autumn, I've been using a lot Burberry for her, which is a very comforting scent, a very warm, crackling fire in the fireplace type of scent. It's also just a little bit heavy, so I can't use too much or it overpowers me and it overpowers everything around it. It's a really delicious type of scent. I've also been using several samples of Trussardi Sound of Donna, which is a more sexy but warm scent. It's not like some man either sexy, it's more like polished sexy, if that makes sense. I've gotten a full size from my mother for Christmas and I'm really happy about it. That's it. That has been it. That has been the miscellaneous category. So yeah, this has been the video. Thank you guys so, so much for watching. Please let me know down below what your top favorites of 2020 were. I would love to hear about it. 
I hope you guys have a happy new year. I hope 2021 is much better for everyone. And honestly, I wish you guys all of the happiness and peace and love, clarity and calm in the new year. Thank you for sticking by with me. Thank you for being with me here. I appreciate you. And uh, yeah, that's it. I'm really awkward at saying goodbye. <laughs> See you guys in the next video. Bye.